Hello and welcome to this Electrical Principles training video. In a previous video in this series, we continued our studies into AC theory and we started to solve the mystery of the fluorescent lamp. We figured out why it was that the voltages inside this fluorescent lamp were behaving rather strangely. And we started to realise that we could understand what was going on there if we understand that the voltages across the lamp and across the choke were out of phase with each other. And we represented that with a phasor diagram. What we're going to do in this video is we're going to look at constructing a scale drawing of what's happening with the voltages inside our fluorescent light. Now this is quite an important skill, it may be something that you're requested to do in an exam, but it will also help to really reinforce your understanding of how it can be that we've got more voltage inside the fluorescent light than we're applying to the fluorescent light. And again, it all boils back down to those all important phases. So let's cut over to the whiteboard and have a look at constructing our scale phasor diagram. So let's have a go at drawing our phasor diagram to scale. Now I'm working on the whiteboard here, so I'm going to use a fairly large scale. If you want to repeat this at home, you might want to use a slightly smaller scale. Uh, you might even want to use something like one volt is equal to one millimeter. That might give you uh, a reasonably nice scale to do on an A4 piece of paper. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to work to one volt so one volt is going to be equal to four millimetres. And what I'm also going to do is just put on the board here the values that we recorded in our original Mystery of the Fluorescent Lamp video. So the uh, voltage that we measured across the resistor, so notice we've got V with an R in the subscript to indicate the voltage across the resistor, is equal to 195 volts. We then found that VL, which is the voltage across the inductor, was equal to 125 volts. And then we found that the total voltage when we measured that was uh, 248 volts. So that was the supply voltage or the total voltage that we were putting into the circuit. So what we're gonna do first of all is we're going to draw to scale our resistive voltage at 195 volts. So in order to help me achieve that, I'm just going to first of all uh, use my spirit level so they get a nice level line at the bottom here and then we'll measure it up and make sure it's the right size so let's have a look at this so we are going to do a line that sort of matches up with these points here so it's nice and level so we've got a nice level line to start with and then what we're going to do is draw a line on here. Now my resistive voltage is 195 volts. So I need to do 195 times by four and 195 times by four is going to give us 780. So that's 78 centimeters. So I'm gonna line this up here and I'm gonna draw 78 centimeters. Okay, so I'll draw 78 centimetres going along here, like this. So there we go, there's 78. So there's 78 there, and I'm going to draw a line that follows that along there. Like that. So that line there represents my resistive voltage. So that line there represents my VR. So it looks a little bit like that. So there we go, that line represents our resistive voltage. What we're going to do now is we're going to figure out where our inductive voltage is going to go. And in order to do that, I'm going to draw a line coming off here at 90 degrees. So I'm going to get my protractor here. And I'm going to draw a line coming up this way at 90 degrees like that. And that line will also want to work to the same scale. So we are looking at the inductive voltage, which is 125 volts. 125 times by 4 is going to give me... 500 millimetres, so that's 50 centimetres, so that's going to come up here. And just managed to miss my writing there, which pleases me greatly. So there we go, and let's put that one in there. So that is now 50 centimetres long, and that is our inductive voltage. And that, of course, represents a value of 125 volts. So now in the previous part of this video, we saw that we can combine these two lines together to find our supply voltage. So let's see how close we get here. Let's have a look at this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a parallel line to VL and VR. So I'm going to 
offset from the end of here, I'm going to come off at 90 degrees from the end of my inductive voltage arrow. I'm going to put a little mark just there after I've finished dropping my pen lid. So I'm going to put a little mark there and then I'm going to just do a dash line that just goes off in that direction. doesn't matter how long I make this line. Uh, the only thing that kind of is reasonably important is that we go beyond the line at the bottom there. So I'm just going to draw a dashed line going along here, like so. So there's the line that is parallel to my resistive voltage. And then I'm going to do the same thing down this side. So again, just to make sure that this is as accurate as I can get it, we've got there. And off the end of my resistive voltage, I'm going to come up at 90 degrees again, and then just do a nice dashed line that overlaps my first dashed line. So that's going to look like this. I'm going to come across there like that. Okay, and you can see that at this point here, these two lines overlap each other. Now at that point there, where those two lines overlap, if we map from this corner up to this corner, we will find our total voltage or our supply voltage into the system. So let's get that drawn on now. Let's find out what that's going to be. So we're going to draw a line from there to there. Okay, that's as accurate as we can. And draw our new voltage arrow in there like that. So there's our new voltage arrow, which is the combined voltage across the resistor and the voltage across the inductor. And that gives us our total voltage or VT. Now, what's really interesting is that actually we could measure this line and that would tell us exactly how long this would be. So let's have a look at that. So we've got the 97 centimeters that's coming out at. So no, sorry, no, 92 centimeters. So this arrow here is 92 centimetres long, so that is 920 millimetres. And if we want to figure out what our voltage is, we go from this side of the ratio to that side. So we're going to say we do 920 divided by 4. And of course, 920 divided by 4 is going to give us 230. Now, that is not intentional in order to match what we say our supply voltage is in this country, the nominal voltage, because actually it would have been nice if we were closer to 248 volts. However, we've come with a reasonably close figure of 230 volts there. So what's interesting about that is that when you look at this value here, is that the reason that that number and that number don't match each other exactly the kind of the clue to that is hidden in this arrow because we are assuming that the inductor inside our fluorescent light is a perfect inductor, that it has no resistance. But of course we know that's not true because the inductor in our fluorescent light has uh, a copper coil inside it, that's what makes it an inductor, and that copper coil has a measure of resistance. So in reality this arrow wouldn't necessarily be pointing at 90 degrees, it would be over this way a little bit. And actually that would have the effect of making this arrow be a little bit longer, which would match up with this. However, for the purposes of understanding the principle of what's going on inside our fluorescent light, we assume that it was a perfect inductor. So that's the principle that we're looking at. We can draw our phasor diagrams to scale, measure them and use that to extract information. In a future video, we'll see how we can use a more mathematically accurate method of figuring out what the total voltage would be involving the theorem of a particular mathematician. So we'll look at that in a future video. So there we have it. We've seen part of the solution to the mystery of the fluorescent lamp. We've figured out why those voltages didn't add up to the supply voltage inside the fluorescent lamp. But what we've seen is that if we just change our thinking just a little bit and think, well, what if I combine those voltages, I combine the effect of those voltages, well, then we see that there is a relationship. We also saw that the relationship wasn't perfect. We saw that the voltage produced wasn't exactly the same from our scale diagram as the voltage that we measured putting into the fluorescent light. 
And the reason for that is that basically what we're dealing with here are imperfect components. All of the rules that we've been through have spoken about purely inductive loads. We don't have a purely inductive load here. What we've got here is a load that is a real world inductor. It has a measure of inductance, but because it's made up of a coil of copper wire, which has a value of resistance, it's not a pure inductor, which means that we can't assume that the current is lagging the voltage by exactly 90 degrees. But what we have seen is the principle of what's happening inside this circuit. And actually, this principle applies to all inductive loads. And what's really interesting is that the circuit diagram that we saw of the resistor connected to the inductor in series, we can actually use that to represent an inductive load just entirely by itself. So we could use that to represent the coil of a motor because the coil of a motor is an inductive load, but it also has a certain amount of resistance. So you can split those two values in the same coil into two separate components, the inductive part and the resistive part. And we can use that to calculate what's going on inside our motors and other inductive loads as well. So we've solved part of the mystery, but not the whole mystery. We've still got to try and figure out what was going on with those strange currents. So we're going to do that in the next video. Thank you very much for watching.